And here, we read that whatsoever we do in word or in deed, we have to do it in the name of the Lord. Okay, what is this? Ah, okay. Sounds like a testimony. Maybe it can be done at the end. Maybe you can take care of that. The sister has a testimony. Maybe it can be done at the end later. Okay. Now, why do we have to do things in the name of the Lord? In word or in date? Now, when you are in the world, you do deeds according to what motivates you. You wake up in the morning and you list a lot of programs that you need to do. You can speak whatever you feel like has come through your mind and you can speak those words. But that's not a way of a believer. A believer has to do everything in the name of the Lord. And that is why we pray over everything. When a new day begins, we say, Lord, lead me in this day. Because we want whatever we do, we want to do it according to his will. That is even in every detail of our lives. When we come to a point when we want to choose a life partner, well, the Bible says he who finds, you know, a wife, you know, finds a good thing, he obtains favor from the Lord. But that's not just something you do blindly. We want to do things in the name of the Lord. And let me read this uh, from Brother Branham's message. I believe this is coming from the Lord who is rich in mercy. And Brother Branham says, God made a way of escape so his believing children can be healed. God is interested in everything that's wrong, everything that you anticipate in, every walk of life, God is interested in you. Things that make your heart to anticipate, anxious. Have you ever been through a situation where you just have a little worry on something? You are wondering, uh, what am I supposed to do? I'm worried on something. God is interested in all those little details. You don't just say, well, I take things before the Lord if it's a very big thing. I'm about to to make a journey to a very far country. I need to pray and seek the will of God. No, we need to seek the will of the Lord in so many things. Even upon what we may think are simple decisions. You know, certain big things which have happened in our lives is because of a certain simple decision that was made. And a child of God should desire the hand of the Lord in everything. So, God is interested in everything. That's wrong. Everything that you anticipate in, every walk of life, God is interested in you. You are his child, and he is rich in mercy. He wants to do for you. Now, the prophet says, you are his child. And that's the reason why he is interested in everything in your life. Those of you with children, 
Children can be a disturbance many times. Right? Every little and while they are asking for this. Oh, daddy, mommy, I want to do this. And certain things you may consider, well, it's not important for you. But it is something that may affect their joy. When uh, I was coming from baptism, I reached home and Terry was so excited and happy. <coughs> he says, oh, daddy, and you know. Uh, then he asked. He came to the car. He says, where is the Kinder Joy? And at that point, I remember that I had promised him Kinder Joy. And when I told him, ah, oh, sorry, I didn't bring, I think we'll do it after church. You should have seen how his joy went away. And his welcome stopped like you posed on a post button he felt so discouraged but you know what the bible says the lord will grant the request of our hearts so that our joy may be complete that's a bible verse and it's like any other verse you can believe it like other portions of scripture that he will grant us the desire of our hearts so that our joy may be complete so Terry's joy wasn't complete <coughs> he was happy I was there and because I promised that I'll come on kinder so he was happy believing I kept my promise but his joy could not be complete because I didn't keep my promise but God <laughs> keeps his promises every one of them so that our joy may be complete. Isn't he a good God? <laughs> but many times, God may want to help us in one way or another. But many times, God may be saying, go this way. But because we are so busy, we believe we know how to do things. We believe our day has already been timetabled. We don't take a little pause to seek the Lord for his will. Say, Lord, what are you speaking in this thing I want to do? Is it a right thing? Is it something that's going to make you happy? Because you see, when someone does not have the Holy Spirit, they just pray for things that can make them happy. And they'll follow what the Bible says like an instruction book. When they do something, say, no, this is not a sin, I need to do it. The Bible hasn't talked about this. But a person who is filled with the Spirit of God, he is very sensitive, not to what he desires to do, but if what he wants to do is in the will of God. Do you understand that? Another person takes advantage of where the Bible is silent. But another person desires what is the heartbeat of God. What would he desire for me? For example, it is a good thing for you to work or to be offered something good. But a person who is spiritual, they always have the trouble of, is this the will of God? Whereas other people say, well, there's nothing wrong with this. I mean, I mean, you need to take this. This is a good thing for you to do. Others can even quote scripture. You know, for example, uh, him that finds a wife. I mean, you need to find a wife. And there's nothing wrong with finding a wife. But a spiritual person, 
Koma mundu wa mzimu. They are more interested in the will of God. Lord, ambuye. I have this desire. Ninachifuni I desire to have a sister by my side. But open my eyes. I desire to know who that person is. Because everything that is within your will will give me peace. But a carnal mind, it leads its way. It takes the Bible like a rule book, okay? Is this one, okay? This specification has been met. Natural hair. No lipstick. Yeah, long dress. This is the will of the Lord. <laughs> you, you don't walk in the will of God like that. The Bible didn't give us, I mean, God did not give us the Bible like a textbook. The Bible, these are written words. But you need the anointing of God to lead you to know what you are supposed to do at a certain time. You know, I was watching the Lincoln movie. And there is a certain episode which touched me. Lincoln wanted to end slavery. He was a strong Christian. And there were other Christians who were supporting him in his agenda. But there are these southern states who are not for the idea because with the abolishing of slavery their businesses would have suffered. So now Lincoln was such a wise man because other people uh, in his you know uh, the people he was leading there were others who wanted things to be done so quickly and immediately. Like right away we need to put up equal rights, we need to do this, we need to do that. But Lincoln was a bit more measured in his zeal and what he wanted to do. He felt if we do everything at once, our proposal of what we want to achieve may be easily defeated by the opponents. But we can achieve it in progression. So I remember one point where this uh, gentleman was arguing with the president, Lincoln. Of course, this is in a movie. And this man says, now the time has come for the freedom of the black man. You know, we are all made in the image and likeness of God. We need to do everything now. So President Lincoln was very careful. He says, you know, we can't do everything at once. So now, this man, you know, gets angry. You know, you need to be a leader. You, you need to lead people. You need to try it. <laughs> you know, you just need to put your foot down and, you know, you... And then, this man says, you need to know that the compass in the white man's heart, it has ossified. You know a compass, the thing that shows you north, east, what? So this man was, you know, you can't depend on the moral decisions of a white man. Because his, uh, you know, compass, which, which should show him the direction, the right thing to do. It has ossified in the white man. So then Lincoln answered. Says, you know, the last time I checked, a compass will only show you north. 
And if you are sailing on a boat or whatever journey, it will just show you the place you are going is north. But the compass won't tell you where you meet a valley. It won't show you the swamps. It will just show you where you want to go. And you know there was a lot of wisdom in what he said. And that is how the scripture is. The holy scriptures are a compass. It shows us the way of truth. The way we need to walk. But these written scriptures, without the spirit of the author, the one who wrote it, you can actually misdirect yourself. Because there is going to come a time in your daily life when you need to make certain decisions that you are going to need the author of this book to speak to your heart. Are you getting the thought I'm speaking? You are going to reach a point where he needs to guide and lead you. He needs to speak to your heart. And tell you no, don't go this way, go this way. And you say, God speaks in different ways. He can speak in a dream. He can speak in a vision. He can speak through a situation, a circumstance. Where you don't hear anything, but something happens and you know it has struck your heart and you know what you need to do. Remember Peter. The Lord has been speaking. Well, he was just a fisherman cleaning his nets, arranging his nets. And the Lord Jesus later on goes to Peter and says, uh, You know, you, you can catch fish. And Peter says, Well, we've toiled all night. You know, God calls us in different ways. And sometimes he calls us through a certain situation or the kind of work that we do. And so the Lord tells Peter, say, no, you launch out your net into the deep. This was a fisherman. He knew the skill of fishing. And he answered the Lord. Well, we toiled all night long. And using his skillmanship, he knew that was the wrong time to do it. That wasn't part of, you know, of how you would catch fish. And he said to the Lord, uh, we actually told all night. He was responding according to what society had taught him. He was answering according to how things work, I mean, in the real world what you call the real world everyday routine this is how we do things we toiled all night so I mean this is not the right time to catch fish Jesus was not a fisherman by human trade he was a carpenter son of a carpenter and if it was just naturally speaking, <laughs> Peter would have said, well, you are a carpenter, what do you know about fishing? <laughs> but this was the Lord of glory speaking. And here's something Peter said. We've told all night, didn't catch fish, but because it's you who's spoken, at your word, he looked at Jesus as a man people respected, a prophet. But Peter really did not have a part in what Jesus was doing. You know, there are those kind of people. They just know, yeah, those people are people of God. But their life is not a part of that. 
You know what I'm talking about? And that was Peter. He was outside. He, I, he was not yet a disciple of Jesus. Then the Lord Jesus told him, launch out into the net. Peter launched out the net. And as he tried to start pulling it, it was a mighty catch of fish. He even called other people to come and help. Because the net was about to break. Here is what I believe. When the Lord stood there, there were no fish at first. And yes, Peter, naturally speaking, he was right. He he toiled on night. But when the Lord stood there, there was something happening there. The presence of God was there. And God was about to do something for the purpose of calling this man Peter. And the God who created the fish, that anointing began to pull them as the Lord was speaking. The fish felt an attraction towards a certain spot. And they were rushing like they're rushing for something they're really looking for. And there they were. They came near where that boat was. The Lord saw it. The Lord Jesus saw it. He wasn't trying out things when he was telling Peter, drop the net. The Lord had already seen it, that the fish has come. And when Peter threw the net, the fish got trapped. The Lord did all that. Now, here is something you need to see. Peter used to catch fish as his work, as his trade, to feed his family. And any person who has a family, he toils, he works hard to feed his family. But you know, Peter had a bad day. And that wasn't the first time he had a bad day. Any kind of business has its bad day. And when that business has a bad day, you have nothing to take home. Didn't the Lord care? This man has nothing to take home. <laughs> you see, there's so many things that trouble us in this life. And sometimes we get worried why a certain thing didn't happen. A certain but when the purpose of God hit that spot, Peter had a bad day. Now, Whatever bad day he had, it was things to benefit his flesh and feed his family. But yet, him having a bad day did not mean there was no fish in the sea. But the fish was elsewhere. Fish were hiding somewhere. And Peter had a bad day. And I believe this wasn't the first time. Whatever fish was in that sea, it was in a place where God had foreseen it and foreordained it to be. And Peter was in a certain place where the fish wasn't there. But when Peter found himself in the program of God, all that fish came to fulfill a certain purpose of God. That this man was supposed to be called into the salvation. So, you know, that's why the Bible says he has cattle on the mountain. I mean, God owns everything. Even what you are praying for. It's not like when you are praying for food it's so hard for God to bring it. Remember Elijah? He was fed by the lovers. So, whatever desire that can be in the heart, the answer is somewhere. It is available somewhere. But you see, God didn't just create us to satisfy whatever our flesh desires. 
Because that would be profitless. I eat, I grow, later I die. What would be the purpose of that? Peter used to catch fish every day. They eat. Yeah, they get satisfied. Later on you go to the toilet. You, you think that is all what life is about? Eat, fill your stomach, go to the toilet, grow, die later on. You can't simplify life. We can't simplify life like that. But something great was about to happen. When the Lord stood there, the fish was coming. And the Lord says, let down your net. And it was a mighty catch of fish. The question is, for what purpose? Why did the Lord bring all the fish? The fish which was previously not there. Was it for the family of Peter to have a good meal? A good brim that night? Was it for Peter to sell more fish and make more business? Remember he had a bad day that day. And when the answer came his way, for what purpose was it brought? If Peter did not have spiritual ears, remember God did not speak audibly to Peter. It looked like an extraordinary thing which happened on a natural level. To every eye that saw that. And if it was another person, when that miracle happened, they would have started counting the cash flow. Wow, I think <laughs> this sorts out the problem I had. I'll now be able to pay that credit. I'll now be able to do this and that. You see, and that is why God does not just answer every prayer to every gym and jack. The Bible says when we pray according to his will, he hears us. You see, you have to be in the program of God. Hmm. So the Lord does a miracle. But Peter doesn't count how much money he'll make out of it. He doesn't get excited. Wow! He's a God of blessings. No. When that happened, he instead was filled with fear. I'm not worthy for this. He goes to the Lord. He says, Lord, I think depart from me. I mean, now, this doesn't tally up. Huh? <laughs> He's supposed to be rejoicing and happy. Oh, thank you, Lord. He's supposed to start counting the blessings. How he'll pay his credit. But instead, it's fear that fills his heart. He says, oh. He saw the presence of God there. And he knew that the presence of God doesn't mix with sin. When the presence of God comes where sin is, either people should repent or they're calling judgment on themselves. And Peter didn't feel worthy. He says, Master, depart from me. Uh, I'm not right. I don't have the right. And the Lord Jesus says, No. <laughs> I've come for you. And now, you'll be a fisher of men. And the Bible says, immediately he left his nets. That was the day he resigned. Immediately. You can't do that in a normal way. You just stop the trade, the trade that feeds your family. The Lord Jesus says, now, Why did the Lord do that? That was a testimony for Peter. He left the nets. 
You know, he had faith. The God who could multiply fish like that. He would take care of his needs as he gets into the ministry to follow the Lord. It was a calling of faith. He left the nets, followed the Lord. Now, you remember one time later on, he did not have money to pay tax. Now, don't look at these disciples like they were superstars. The disciples were human beings who had expenses. Do, do you understand that? And here is Peter, he's worried. And you know, there used to be tax collectors that time. And Peter did not have and he was worried for himself and the Lord Jesus because there was no money to pay tax and if there is something the Roman Empire used to be so hard on it was taxes and the Lord noticed the face of Peter was looking worried many of you you are so cast down every day worrying on things Yes, many of you here, especially women. Women, you like complaining a lot. You want this, you want to pay for that, you want... You get worried. Even brothers get worried. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. Those are not just scriptures for you to memorize. Oh, when you are in prayer, you say, Oh Lord, you won't say, Be anxious for nothing. But in prayer, let your supplication be made known unto the Lord. That is not a memory verse. It's the word of God which you need to apply in your life. It has to be your life. And with the so many things the Lord has done for me, I have learned to trust Him now, even when it seems so impossible. He is the one that takes care of us. But I know we are human beings and sometimes we get weak. But when you are weak, it's not time to open your mouth and you start complaining to every person. Oh, I'm so stressed. A child of God should go on his knees and ask for strength from the Lord. When I am weak, he is strong. But you have to believe him. And Peter was worried. What was he worried about? A thing that every other person was worried about. Tax. And you know how most people used to live their life? People would take God like a distant uh, almighty spirit. You only have to approach him on very serious things. But no, 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 no. In everything, in every word, in every deed. Do it in the name of the Lord. Seek his will. A worry over something. A financial burden. And here Peter is introduced to God who is close to our hearts. Not God who just meets the priests when they are sacrificing animals on the altar. Not a God people knew would only speak to Elijah and come upon a king. This was the opening of the new covenant. People were experiencing a God that would speak to them in love. And here Peter is worried. Where do we get the tax man? He didn't speak it with his mouth. But his faith showed worry. And the Lord asked Peter what was bothering him. And Peter talks about tax. The faith of Peter was low. And the Lord Jesus begins to remind him 
That day when he was called, remember he was a fisherman. And why did God multiply the... Uh, uh, why did the Lord cause that mighty catch of a fish? Not for him to prosper in his business, but to give him faith to have something to stand on as he would leave his employment. The God who supplied is the God who would take care of the needs of Peter. So the Lord Jesus told him you'll be a fisher of men. And Peter immediately left the nets. There was no worry as, as to who will feed my family. The miracle was enough to show him the Lord will supply all your needs. But in our journey through life, sometimes we go through valleys and we feel God is far away. He may not see the, the complaint I'm having or the fix I am in. But the Lord looked at Peter and told him, you get the hook, go to the waters go to the waters the first fish you catch why did the Lord say the first fish this was not a by the chance thing it was to show Peter God knows everything he knew that fish that had swallowed that coin now, you know fish swallow coins and things, things which are thrown in the water. Fish swallow things. And in all the millions of fish which were in that water, the eyes of God knew that one particular fish that ate that coin which was enough to pay for tax. The money was not less by any amount. Oh, he's a God who knows everything. And if he knows everything, why can't you believe him? He knows where that thing you're looking for is. He knows where that coin which has been swallowed is. But the trouble is we walk through this life after the imaginations of our thoughts and minds. Oh, brother. The walk of faith is not a walk of reasoning. It is a walk of hearing God and standing upon what he has spoken. And if you trust him on one step, he will be willing to lead you to another. But if your life is characterized by fear, your life will be stuck. Because God does not lead cowards. He leads people who have faith in his promises. Praise the Lord, amen. And when Peter caught that fish, the money was enough to pay for his tax and the tax for the Lord. <laughs> you remember one time the Pharisees came to the Lord do you pay tax? Oh, is it right to pay tax? And they wanted to trap him. Because there was a rumor that he doesn't respect the, the giving of tax. And, or the authorities. And, you know, people can have a way to always find where to put you in a fix. Now, here is. They ask him. They ask him in order to trap him legally. If he says something before this crowd of people, he can easily be accused of inciting people to break the laws of the land. Okay, so what do they do? Is it lawful to give tax? 
There's something they knew for them to bring up this question. And they want to trap him, right? What does he answer them? Uh, show me a coin. Give me a coin. Now, you know, in those days, they would put an inscription. An and the Lord knew how to answer them. He asked them, Whose image is this? Yeah. Now, that was silver. <laughs> Where does silver come from? It's a natural thing. And we dig it, huh? Right? But you know, there's a way human beings we do things. We get these things, put our stamp on it, and we think we own that. And he says, whose inscription is this? Whose image is this? Everyone was like, Caesar, Caesar. So he says, give to Caesar <laughs> what belongs to Caesar. And yes, as you are in this world, pay your taxes, do whatever you have to do, but a day of reckoning is coming. Do you know that silver did not even belong to Caesar? Do you know that? Do you know the question the Lord asked was deeper than what people think? Are you getting the thought? Say, whose image is that? Caesar. Caesar. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Caesar. And yes, we are bound by the laws. These nations have put in place. But a day of reckoning is coming. Because every gold and silver belongs to God. And men have abused these things. And imprisoned people. Oh yeah, but the day of reckoning is coming. The Lord of glory, he owned everything. They wanted him to pay tax for coming into this world. Isn't it a foolish idea? When it was time to be born, he didn't have a house. The Lord of glory. You know, many times as human beings, we are so blind, our eyes are so blind. We don't see the hand of God where the hand of God is. We've made the Lord to pay tax. We've chased the Lord out of our houses. He has no place where to be. We are masters of our own affairs. And later on, when one grows up and dies, a day of reckoning is coming. What did I do with the life God gave me? Oh, you worked so hard. You spent your life in your office and running up and down, on the roads working. To raise an amount of money to feed your family. And whatever you raised, it was for feeding other mortal bodies which would die and rot. That is why whatever comes through your hand, which doesn't go into God's eternal program, that is a big loss you are doing. But whatever little ends up in the program of God. It has eternal value. Because whatever it does, it's for the salvation of souls. And that soul, its life doesn't end in the grave. That is why those who lead many to righteousness, righteousness they, they will shine like stars. Daniel chapter 12. That's the biggest, most important thing you can do in this life. Doing something for the kingdom of God. When Peter the Lord supplied his needs, he had nothing to do with that fish. He left the fish. Maybe others, they're the ones who say, Zona, 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 you are dead. No. The Lord told him, 
I'm making you a fisher of men. And the Bible says immediately he left. What of that fish? Well, he told us uh, you, you can make use of it. There was a higher calling. Now, there wasn't an audible voice which came to him and said, Peter, follow the Lord. Peter just saw what happened. I'm a sinner. Lord, leave me. The circumstance was able to speak to him. So God can speak in a dream. God can speak in a vision. God can speak through a situation. But it takes eyes which see to see. A fool who look see nothing. Hmm. But other people, there's something which happened. And they were able to say, mm. I think God is not happy. Or I think God is telling me to do this. Like the testament I just gave you. I'm praying for something. Then this thing comes. Okay. You know, tell this is what I was praying for. So you need to have eyes. You need to have ears to discern the leading of the Lord. Because we have to do everything in the name of the Lord. In His will. In the guidance of the leading of the Lord. And then the Lord will bless us. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And now you see, when you do things after the leading of the Lord, if the Lord today tells me, Andrew, stand up. Go and preach in Kalikileke. And I know the Lord has spoken. When I go to Kalikileke, no matter what dangerous situation I find myself in, God is obligated to protect me. Because I am there in the name of the Lord. But it is different when you make a program for yourself. You are exposed to danger. And that is why the name of the Lord walking in his will is like a strong mighty power for your protection and safety. And many times we find ourselves in certain circumstances because we don't like consulting with the Lord. We are so busy with our activities. And sometimes you think, Lord, I'm asking for your will over this. And you've already made that decision. So why are you wasting time? Say, Lord, show me uh, it is your will for me to marry that sister. But you've already communicated to her. You are already sending each other text messages. So why are you speaking that nonsensical prayer? What do you want the Lord to confirm? You've already confirmed it. And then you even go to the pastor. Pray for me, I'm looking for. Don't take the name of the Lord in vain. When you're seeking God for his will, you need to be ready for what he will speak. And that is why never go ahead of God. Wait on the Lord. He may speak to you in a dream, in a circumstance, and only you can know the Lord has spoken here. Because if you walk with the Lord, you will know his voice. Praise the Lord. Amen.